Well, good uh, morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We'll be talking today about the SP11N uh, VoIP module. So without further ado, let's just get right into this. Okay, we'll cover off the standard uh, topics. You, we'll look at some of the features built into the uh, device itself, some application configurations, uh, basically how, to, how are we going to use this module. Um, and since uh, this module uses uh, open collectors for control, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we need to do in order to work with open collectors. Um, you'll find uh, open collectors on uh, quite a few of uh, TOA products. Uh, they're space-saving uh, active devices. Instead of large bulky relays, we uh, like to use the open collector concept. Uh, then we'll look at uh, installing the SP11N into a host uh, amplifier, and we'll do some basic testing to uh, get the module up and running. We'll look at how to configure your computer uh, NIC card so that uh, we can uh, log on to the SP11N. And we'll go over the browser software. That's uh, basically what we're using to control and configure the SP11N. There is no software. It's all browser-based. So. Anybody's uh, browser you can use, uh, any type of computer, whether it's a, a Windows, Mac, or a Linux-type computer. However, uh, this is going to be focused towards the Windows browser. And we'll look at uh, how to use the SP11 end from a user perspective. So what do we got? The uh, SP11 end, uh, of course, is, uh, uh, as I've mentioned, is a uh, VoIP a zone paging module. And because it's a 900 series type module, it's uh, ported in any of the uh, amplifiers or mixers that uh, support that particular module slot. We have the uh, 700 series, 900, the BG series, and the 9000 M2 series will all host the uh, SP11N. It uses the built-in uh, power amplifier of uh, that supported uh, mixer amplifier. It connects as a typical phone extension to your VoIP router. Uh, supports up to five PA zones using uh, the open collector output switching or uh, to connect to that it would be a relay bank so one amplifier feeding multiple relays uh, distributing the uh, power to the multiple five zones it's capable of zone combining so once you set up your uh, five zones or however number of zones up to five you can group them uh, we have that control I mentioned for the SS, the TOA SS9001 and the QSS9012 uh, relay uh, zone uh, management uh, device. Uh, we have uh, adjustable VOX sensitivity. That's a, a gate so that we can set um, when the voice actually uh, passes through the device. So if you have uh, some background noise, you can set the level. Uh, to uh, prevent uh, the background noise from interfering and uh, the voice, speaking voice, will trigger the gate. Uh, we have a mix on and off capability, so um, because we also host uh, the mute one and two send and receive capabilities, uh, we can uh, have this so it mixes in with uh, background music or we can use the mute facilities uh, mute one and two bus, uh, and this will be a send or receive a device. Uh, it adapts uh, easily to a phone network IP address. It's uh, uh, pretty much a, a computer type of device. It just will find the network, and we'll talk about that in a bit. When uh, it does find the um, address for the router, it will provide a, an IP address, and it will speak that out so you can hear exactly what uh, the address has been assigned to this particular module. And uh, it is, as I mentioned before, a browser setup and configuration. So let's look at the front panel of the unit. Um, we have a, a few indicators, LEDs, uh, phone connectivity. Uh, it will be steady if you've got a, a, a good connection to your uh, router. Uh, if there's any sort of error problems or during initial, initialization, the red LED will blink on and off until it uh, finds the uh, router and then it will go away and you'll get a green solid connection on the phone connection uh, indicator. We have an adjustment for that box mute sensitivity, which acts as a gate, uh, so we can set that level. 
uh, power supply, which is supplied with the unit. Uh, it runs off a separate power supply. It does not use the amplifier power. Uh, we have a, your typical uh, network connection uh, with the data indicator to show that there is some uh, data activity uh, and whether we're connected to that network. It's a typical RJ45. Uh, basically, a VoIP router is just that, a network appliance. And uh, we have the, at the green connector, we have the five control ports, the open collector ports uh, for switching relays, et cetera. And uh, on, not on the front panel, but in the back, uh, we have uh, selections for mute uh, one and two, whether it's a send or receive. Uh, we have that mix on and off uh, switch. Uh, and by default, it's in the off position. And uh, we can defeat the box completely so that uh, that sensitivity setting has no effect. It's always, uh, gate is always uh, on, uh, or rather open and passing signal. And uh, we also have a reset button that will set it right back to factory defect, or sorry, factory default. Okay, so let's look at uh, the, the basic um, configuration for the SIP module. Uh, as, a, as a, a very basic uh, setup uh, for a single zone, um, you could have the SIP module in one of the uh, aforementioned uh, TOA amplifiers and passing audio out of that amplifier uh, into your speaker. And I also wanted to show that uh, these open collectors could also be used for other things too. In this case, uh, let's say you have a busy warehouse you're uh, paging into that warehouse, you could set up one of the output contacts uh, to provide a uh, in-call signal, uh, set off a strobe so that uh, when people see the strobe, they'll uh, quieten down or shut off the machinery uh, or pay attention to that particular uh, page coming through. So in its simplest uh, configuration, um, that's just a single zone setup. In a multi-zone setup, uh, we could uh, send off uh, the same configuration with the uh, single power amplifier, but we're going to have to use the zone control, the one to five open collector outputs, uh, onto a controlling relay bank. And in this case, I'm showing the QSS9012 from TOA and the SS9001. These are relay banks that uh, are two channels. They can host background music on a separate powered channel, as you can see um, in the drawing here. And we also bring in the uh, paging uh, into uh, the page port. And by default, the BGM is always online, and when we page, the relay will flip, and uh, background music will cease in that particular zone, and the page will go through. And this is all done, again, through the uh, zone control uh, output collectors uh, for the SP11M. So that's a single uh, power amplifier configuration. And what you have to uh, keep in mind is that that single amplifier has to provide uh, maximum power for all of the zones if you were to do an all call. So keep in mind that, uh, that the size of your power amplifier uh, is depending on the all call scenario. So if I were to key all five zones, I want to make sure that my amplifier is capable of supporting all of those five zones in total wattage. So keep that in mind. Another possibility here is if, if we use a, um, a straight mixer output, in this case I'm showing the 9000 M2, we can uh, send out line levels uh, out the uh, mixer output ports, the two that are built in, and uh, we can add in some T modules to provide some more line outputs. And then we could feed into uh, power amplifiers. And, and this uh, scenario might happen if you have uh, some very high powered uh, requirements for some of the zones. You may have to put uh, uh, much more power than um, the uh, 900 or the 700 series amplifiers can, can provide. So this allows us some flexibility in providing a separate uh, um, power configuration on the output side. As for the 9000 M2, that could also be uh, an A9000, so you could actually use some of the built-in power uh, sections of the 9000 and um, run those off as separate channels and also take some line outs into uh, remote uh, power amplifiers, et cetera. So there's uh, many ways you can configure this particular scenario. 
Um, the output controls from the open collectors are fed back into the CNs, and that actually will work the uh, matrixing and select the cross point channels on uh, to steer the uh, uh, page to the appropriate zone, and that's uh, indicated here back in through the CN. Then we get into uh, other scenarios where uh, since uh, the um, host amplifier or mixer, the TOA, TOA modular mixer, can provide a audio out, we can also take this in uh, to other devices in our lineup. And, and I'm looking at the VM3000, the N8000, and the NX100. So all these devices need is some sort of uh, line level audio coming in plus some control. And uh, all of these, uh, these particular three devices do work under that uh, scenario with uh, closure control and we can steer the page into different zones. So now we can work with uh, intercom uh, with up to five zones and groups of those zones for uh, paging. The NX100 of course is, is uh, a, a WAN based device and you could use that to uh, trigger um, broadcasts uh, basically around the world into uh, different regional areas uh, using the uh, NX100 uh, topology. I want to talk a little bit about those open collectors. Uh, again, uh, these are not relays, although they act like relays. These are active devices. And uh, as such, they have to be uh, supplied with a voltage. Um, here I'm showing an external relay. This could be a, a relay of the um, 9001 or SS9012. At any rate, uh, we require a B plus. Uh, the open collector is an active device, as I said, so it wants to uh, basically be biased uh, and ready for activation. So uh, once we uh, have that set up, um, a single channel, you can see uh, in the background here, uh, there's five of these identical circuits inside the uh, SP11N. Uh, ready for use. And then once, uh, once we have a, a, a dial selected here, uh, the uh, transistor here will um, forward conduct and your current will flow and your relay device out here, or whatever device, could be an LED, could be a uh, separate relay, um, third party relay or whatever, whatever device is out here will now, the uh, current will flow and it will either activate that uh, relay or um, LED or whatever. You notice I have a, um, a diode in here. Uh, please, when you're working with audio devices and relays, please make sure you have that clamping diode in there because the uh, energy stored, the magnetic energy stored in that relay when the current is flowing, when that uh, circuit opens up again, uh, that uh, energy is going to uh, flow again in the reverse direction and you want to make sure you clamp that out and suppress it or you'll get a big pop in your audio system. So please, um, uh, now our 9001s and SS9012s already have this built in, but if you're using a separate relay, please pay attention to that. Also the uh, maximum uh, for these uh, open collectors, uh, transistors, the maximum forward voltage is 27 volts DC and 50 milliamps uh, per channel on here. Okay, so pay attention to that, that uh, your load here doesn't exceed 50 milliamps, and certainly the uh, forward voltage. So, okay, so what is required here to make this all work? Well, uh, obviously, we're going to have to connect to a uh, VoIP uh, phone router. It's just another network appliance. Our particular product, uh, the SIP protocol, is following the RFC 3261. This is a common standard. You'll find that in pretty much uh, every implementation of uh, phone router. Now, there might be some proprietary um, protocols out there that are stripped down or really uh, modified. Uh, it may not work. Uh, you'd have to try that. But this is typically going to work with a Cisco phone system or a VEA, that sort of thing. Um, a simple uh, SIP or whatever they call it uh, works just fine. You're going to have to engage the phone provider, uh, similar to working with a uh, client's network. They're not going to let you touch that network. 
Um, as an example, installing an uh, 8000 intercom into a client's network, that you're going to have to obviously talk to their IT people. Same with the phones. You won't probably, unless you're the actual phone provider, uh, you're not going to be able to set up their um, uh, phone network. Uh, so you'll have to uh, obviously interface with the phone provider to uh, do some uh, port setup and uh, uh, sign an extension number for that particular port we're going to use. As I stated before, you need a, a mixer amplifier, and again, that amplifier power has got to be suitable for an all call. And uh, the TOA speaker relay controller, if that's the way you want to go, um, the 9001 and the 9012 was uh, suitable for that. So that's uh, the basic setup uh, that you'll need to uh, do zone paging. So, as uh, simple as inserting that SP11N uh, module into a particular module slot. Um, as uh, by default, the SP11N does not have an IP address. It adapts to the phone network. So technically, uh, out of the box, it's 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Once you have uh, the module in, simply connect the speaker. Then you're going to connect to your phone system. Then you're going to power up the amplifier. Then uh, you're going to connect some power to the SP11N. And after a few seconds, you're going to hear the SIP IP address spoken. Okay, that's using the Sonic IP um, uh, functionality. Uh, please note down this address. It's probably, in all likelihood, going to be different than the assigned uh, port for that phone system. But you need this address in order to log on to the browser. So please, when you, you hear the IP address being spoken, it comes out in probably, if it's found the, the network, the phone network, it'll actually sound out right uh, within maybe 10 seconds of plugging in the power supply. If you miss it, just unplug the power supply, plug it back in, and wait for the IP address to be spoken again. Now, you can do all this without the phone connected. However, um, the, the issue being is that it's looking for that router. And so it's going to take about three to four minutes before it gives up and says, okay, there isn't a phone system attached, and um, I'll assign a basically a random IP address. Note that address because that's, it's all good. You'll still be able to use that address, either the one assigned or this random one, in order to log on to the browser because that's where we're going to make the changes to the setup. Okay, so now the SP11N has uh, an IP address. Okay, and it'll speak it out as uh, 172.18.1.12 or whatever it comes up with. So, a uh, quick uh, overview of uh, com setting up your computer. We, we do need a static IP address, so go into the control panel, uh, look for the network and, and internet. Uh, you're going to do the view network status, so click on that. Uh, that's going to take you to the <coughs> um, network, uh, the NIC card setup. Going to look for the local uh, area connection there. You're going to click on that, and that's going to take you to the properties page. Select that, and you're going to select the um, IP version four. That's what it uses, and uh, we're going to say OK, and then we're going to assign uh, an address to your computer. Now this address has should be. It will has to be in the same domain range as the NIC card or the SB11N. So uh, if it uh, announced that it was 172.18.1.12, then pick a, a higher range uh, address at the end uh, to get away from any other possible devices on the network. Uh, so uh, 200 is a, a good one. You could pick anything you want, but at the higher end is a better arrangement. But 172.18.1 for this particular scenario is the domain and then this is the address on that domain. You have to set up the subnet masks because we're only looking at the last octet here. So that's a typical setup for uh, static IP address. Okay, so once we're done that, we're ready to go. So we'll uh, connect the computer and to the uh, SIP card we've 
uh, disconnected the uh, connection from the VoIP router uh, that was connected to the SP11N so that we could pick up uh, the domain, etc. Uh, so uh, a simple way of doing this is you take a crossover cable, come straight from uh, the computer straight across and into the SIP module. Now, uh, a tip here is you, because uh, the VoIP router is just a network, you can use a, a dumb switch, a uh, typical $50 switch you find at uh, shoot Future Shop. Uh, well, I guess that's Best Buy now, but <laughs> uh, just a switch. And that way, the router can stay online, too, so you can see some dynamics going on. So uh, simplest way, straight across with a crossover cable, or use standard cabling and go through a switch, and that way it's all interactive and all online at the same time. So what we're going to do now is launch the browser using that IP address that was spoken to us, and then the browser page will, page will appear. So that'll take us to, to the, the home page, <clears throat> and there's uh, several tabs that we go through the home configuration, defaults, update and reboot, etc. This is generally what the home page looks like, your typical browser page. And each one of these tabs has a, a menu here um, explaining all of the uh, adjustments that you can be, may, be made or the features associated with these uh, items on, on the left here. So this is basically the manual for the unit itself. And you can see we've entered in the IP address up in the address bar. You can just type it straight in. You don't have to do anything other than type straight into the address and um, you'll log on to the uh, SIP module. So uh, I will go over each one of these pages quickly. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into great detail, but um, the home page is uh, basically your information page. So it's going to show you that um, you're connected as a, a SIP device, that the router, the, the uh, phone router, this is its uh, address and domain range, and the phone extension that has been assigned to the um, SIP module will show up here once we configure it. This is I'm a little ahead of the game here. This actually won't show up. Uh, until we actually change the IP, uh, IP address of the module. Because right now, uh, we're technically not connected to uh, the phone because obviously the address is wrong. But at any rate, uh, I'll show you that in a bit. <clears throat> um, the time to the next registration, this is about every half hour. It uh, goes out and um, uh, gets a re-registration, makes sure uh, the handshake is good and everything is uh, working okay. We have a call stay here. Uh, when uh, call's not happening, it'll show idle. Um, when a call is uh, active, it'll, it'll just say inactive call. And it'll show uh, the remote party that is actually paging into the system. In this case, it was the TOA showroom and uh, the SIP address. Uh, this is the extension of this showroom, 325. And this is the router that it was using to uh, make that call. Down here we have the current uh, set volume as uh, showing you uh, what the level is set inside the unit. Uh, we have the ability to adjust that. It's on another page, but this is just information only where things are set. Um, these two are um, your peak level settings on, on DB full scale, which runs from 99. In this case, since nothing's happen, happening, uh, they're basically uh, at infinity or off. Uh, so it runs from 90, uh, minus 99 to 0 dB. So your output level and your input level, in other words, the inbound stream level and your output uh, level to um, your amplifier section. Okay, and these, these are dynamic sections here. So you'll see some activity in here uh, if you log on to this page, and it'll tell you the health of, uh, of the system itself. Okay, so on the configuration page under the basic, uh, this is where you're going to set up. This is where most of your work is done in order to make this all uh, come together. Um, it's going to show you, uh, again, your uh, router address of your phone system and um, 
uh, your extension, uh, etc. But um, if your uh, phone router requires a password, uh, you'll enter it in here so that the handshake can happen um, if, if it's password pr protected. Um, it's always going to be an auto answer, although this is a pull down box, uh, there's nothing there to pull down it, because it's uh, a, a paging system, it's always going to auto answer. Um, hang up time, uh, this uh, allows us to uh, adjust uh, when the calls will terminate, they go in 5 second steps, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 30, that sort of thing. Uh, so the call will terminate. Uh, automatically uh, after so many seconds or you can just leave it, leave it unlimited in which case it'll go forever. So the way this is set up, this is a matrix and across the top in the green box we have the control outputs and these are the same outputs that are physically located on this SP11N. Okay, so that, that's your output for your control. Down here in the blue box is the keypads. So uh, if you dial, as an example, and, and the way this is set up, uh, by default these are all off when you get the unit. So you're going to set up your patch here. And the way I've got this set up, if I dial one, I'm going to close the open collector here and activate the relay that's going to activate that particular zone. So in this case, I've configured it this way. Second one, this way. Third, etc. So this is a one-to-one -one dialing pattern here. It doesn't have to be that way. You can do it any way you want. As I've shown down here, here's the groupings that I've created. And I've got logical, uh, you know, depending on your facility and application, you're going to set this up differently. But ideally, uh, this is going to uh, make some sense to how the, the user wants to page into their facilities. You might have multiple warehouses. Uh, maybe outside locations, uh, different floors, whatever. But this is, this is basically your grouping. And these groupings can extend into this area also, uh, depending on the numbers uh, you use in here. Um, will allow more groupings, but uh, basically if you only have one or two zones select selected as uh, calls or, or paging zones, there aren't a lot of groups to create. However, there are more groups once you get into more zones possible. So uh, this area you'll have to uh, determine with the client exactly how they want to zone out uh, their uh, paging system. They may never want um, individual zoning. They may always have sort of group groupings of uh, zones, etc. If we leave one of the keys as all off, that can be used as a hang-up key. And so uh, normally when we terminate a call, we just put the phone back into the cradle. You might pick up some noise uh, as you put the uh, handset back into the cradle. But if you uh, designate one of these uh, keys here, uh, in this case it's key zero as all off, and you dial that, it will terminate the call and um, basically can hang up without uh, having uh, cradle noise uh, as, the, as it hits the uh, phone base. Now in here in the purple section under special functions, uh, we have uh, two um, possibilities. It does uh, take up, since we only have the five control outputs, if you use these it does remove some of the possibilities for zoning down here, but um, these can be used as activation um, uh, indicators. In this case, uh, if you want to show that the phone system is available, you might use this as an indicator uh, to an indicator light uh, that um, the phone system is not being used. And um, down here in start call, you might use this, as I indicated before, as a strobe output uh, to um, warn people that a page is coming through in a uh, busy uh, environment um, so they can listen up and, and uh, listen uh, for the page. Um, Again, uh, these, these are all part of the, the key structure here. So obviously if you, if you use these, you remove two possible uh, outputs from these uh, five closures here. So you, actually you'd be down to three zones now. However, um, you could uh, certainly uh, do, uh, configure it that way. Okay. 
Okay, so on this page, uh, we're into the advanced uh, settings now. We're looking at the network. And so once you hit the home page and you want to um, connect to actually to the phone router, you would immediately go to this page, and now you would set up what the assigned IP address would be. It had spoken to us uh, in this example that it was .12, but the phone person told me it's dot nine. So I put in the dot nine, make sure the network mask is there and the default gateway is, is correct, etc. And then I'm going to apply this. Once I apply this, I'm going to lose my browser. It's because obviously I've changed my uh, address for the SIP module. So uh, once that happens, you'll have to log back in under using this address and then you're good to go. Uh, use a sonic IP. I, I definitely leave that on yes while you're setting it up because every time you uh, reboot or change this address, it's going to speak the uh, IP address that you have entered or it uh, has been assigned. Okay? It's as simple as that. We get into the SIP protocol. Again, the SIP server, all it wants to see is uh, the address of the uh, router itself, um, the SIP ID, which is actually the extension number, and a SIP uh, password. Again, that's, this, these are the areas where we would change it for that particular uh, password that uh, might be required for the uh, VoIP router. If we look at uh, inbound calls, because that's exactly what we're doing, we're phoning into the module to do a page, we have this capability of input buffer level. Uh, by default, it's set to 30 milliseconds, and this is going to uh, stack up uh, the packets so that um, if you have a noisy line or not a very fast uh, network, uh, it will assemble these in a buffer and then spit them out. So it, it builds in a bit of latency so that uh, should your network not be up to speed, it can uh, provide uh, coherent uh, paging uh, on the audio stream. This can be set to zero if you have a very fast network. Set it to zero and your page is instantaneous. This can go up to minutes, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> but uh, 30 milliseconds is the default. I would leave it at that uh, to get her going and then see how much you can reduce that uh, before you have any problems. You might not. Our system here, I can run this at zero and I'm paging immediately. Uh, there's no delay uh, or latency in the audio stream. Uh, phone pickup again is auto answer. There's nothing you can do there. Uh, this is the hang up time. This is where you would set it. As I mentioned before, we have 510, you know, basically five seconds up to 60 seconds of um, a hang up time so that if you want to make sure that uh, the phone system isn't tied up or the paging system isn't tied up in case somebody left the phone off hook or whatever, um, that's one way of doing it. There's also a stream timeout. Um, this is a network device and as happens in some networks, uh, a node will go offline and if that happens, um, you would basically tie up your system if we didn't have a stream tie out. So, timeout. So if uh, you set this up. Um, basically, what's going to happen if the audio stream stops for a period of time, you can set in the time, uh, zero to 600 minutes. If it sees that uh, there is no audio stream within that period of time, it will hang up the system and um, it will be ready to go for the next page in. So you might want to set this up uh, you know, to a, to a minute anyhow. Most most pages are uh, coming in at uh, 10 to 15 seconds. They're not long-winded uh, um, pages. So uh, I definitely set this up. Again, anytime you make any changes, please do and apply. The encoding, uh, this is your uh, Kodak used to uh, compress the audio. Uh, there are three selections. Uh, and in this case, the default is U-Law. It's an 8K uh, type of codec. Uh, there is A-Law, and there's also a G.722, which is a 16 kilohertz. But uh, you're not going to hear really that much difference. This is telephony. So uh, by default, this works. Um, I would just leave it there. There's no real good reason. The audio quality through this particular uh, device is actually quite, quite good. It's excellent. This is your volume adjustment, so you can make some volume adjustments here, uh, up to 100% or down. So 
when you're doing your gain staging, um, if you're having to crank your amplifiers uh, wide open, uh, you might want to back those off and then up the volume here to keep your uh, gain levels at the front end um, as high as possible before clipping, etc., so that uh, you can get good signal to noise. We have some security settings here. Uh, we can uh, reset function. We can uh, enable or disable factory defaults, update functions, etc. Um, also, the browser can be protected. Um, if you enter in a password here, what will happen is that uh, anytime you launch the browser, it's going to ask you for a username and password. Uh, so uh, there isn't a password by default, but if you put something in here, what happens is that this dialog will pop up and it'll prompt you to put in a username. Uh, I would suggest while you're setting this up that you just put the model name in, SP11N, and a password, use lowercase guess. This is a, a typical TOA uh, format for our products that require uh, passwords, etc. We use the model name and we use guest. Now, certainly, you might want to change this after the fact, uh, discuss with the client what they want to use, and, and make sure you uh, uh, record this somewhere so that uh, should you go back a uh, half year later, if you need to set it up, well, um, you won't uh, have forgotten what the password and the, the uh, username is. Factory de defaults, if uh, you need to put this back, let's say uh, you, you tested the, the module and uh, you, you want to take it onto site now and maybe use it in a different configuration, you can certainly reset everything back to factory default. It'll wipe out all your matrixing patches and um, uh, addresses and things like that. And uh, if there's future updates from TOA, uh, this is where you would go. You'd find the binary file and uh, do an upload uh, when uh, required. And here's the reboot device. If you are having a problem with, uh, with the unit, uh, you want to reset it um, to uh, re-log on to the uh, VoIP router, then um, you can use this to reboot the SIP module. Okay, so how are we going to use this uh, module? Well, simply uh, connect to a phone network, dial the SP11 extension number, you select a, a single zone or a, or a group using the dial pad, uh, as indicated down here, so you have uh, one, one to ten, so to speak, uh, buttons to dial, um, and they, they obviously are going to represent uh, what you've programmed in. At any time, another uh, zone can be selected. So if I'm on zone one and I'm paging into there, finish there, and I want to go to zone two, it'll hang up the previous zone and engage the new zone. When the page is finished, uh, simply hang up. And as I mentioned before, if, uh, if you've designated a dialing number as off, uh, that number can be used before hang up to reduce the uh, handset noise on uh, replacing the um, the handset onto the cradle. Fairly simple. And that's how the user would uh, dial in and, and use the system. So, in conclusion, uh, TOA now has integration into a VoIP phone systems, five zones, groups can be made up depending on how many zones you've selected. Very simple to acquire the, the domain range for the um, phone system. It's going to inherit that. It's going to assign an IP address. A very simple operation. You can use any browser set it up, any computer that uh, has a browser. Uses a, an internal single channel amp of, of the host amplifier. Uh, can provide uh, line level outputs from that host amplifier if you want to go into uh, more power. And uh, control outputs for relay channels, and uh, as you've seen, some other uses. I mean, you could use those outputs to do anything. It doesn't have to be a page. It could be you want to turn some lights on or turn a siren on or uh, screen up and down. <laughs> I mean, you could do anything you want with those. It doesn't necessarily have to be a voice channel. Um, okay, so the first question is, doesn't the module grab its power from the car slot? No, it doesn't. Um, basically, all of the module slot does is host the um, 
audio stream and the mute bus on and off. So you have to supply it secondary power. Uh, that's, uh, um, that's the way it works. Um, I'm not sure, I don't know the ins and outs, why the engineers decided to go that route, um, but uh, it does require um, a second source of power and it is supplied with the unit, so uh, uh, you're ready to go once you receive the unit. The next one is a DHCP uh, defaulted. Yes, it is. it will pick up the dynamics of it, um, of the host uh, router. The, uh, but by default, out of the box, like most uh, um, IP appliances come with a default 192.168, etc. type of IP address. Because we can adapt and it has a sonic IP, um, they decided to go this route and um, it will uh, pick up uh, one of the ports on the router. It will assign the uh, domain range and it will assign the, the first available uh, address that's not busy on that particular router. Um, no, and, and somebody asked again about the card slot. No, we can't grab the power from the card slot, um, as mentioned before. Uh, yes, all of the all of the programming. Uh, if if we lose power off uh, from the unit itself, if if the power goes down from the external power or whatever, um, all of the uh, setting files are flashed into the unit. They they are there. So next time you power it up, it's going to come right back online. It's going to spit out the IP address, and you're ready to go. I've cycled it many times here, trying to test for these sorts of scenarios, and it always comes up uh, right where you left off. So uh, no problem there uh, uh, dropping uh, the line because of uh, power issues. Uh, eight paging zones. Okay, so yeah, while we're set up for five, my guess, uh, we've had this discussion here, is if you want to go past five, um, certainly on the 9000, it can host um, more than uh, one module. Um, and so you would put two modules in. You would uh, set up the two modules as independents. They would still have uh, unique uh, IP addresses and uh, unique extension numbers. So unfortunately, it's a bit of um, um, an issue with the end user. They would obviously have to uh, dial in the extension that's appropriate to the zones that they want to call. Now, if the phone system, and I'm not sure, I haven't checked this yet, but it might be possible to transfer out of that um, extension into the other extension, then continue on dialing. I haven't emulated that here, but uh, thanks for asking that, because uh, that's one of the things that we want to test. Do we need, truly need, well, we will truly need two extensions, but do I have to remember two extension numbers, or can I dial in one extension and then carry on to the next one by dialing uh, through that extension somehow. That's probably a phone setup, uh, and I would have to uh, check with our phone providers here to see what are the possibilities here. But as two standalone units, yes, you could set this up. However, it's two extensions, and the client would have to know that that extension is for those five zones, the other extensions for the other five zones. It looks like there's one more question. Like, will it work with an IP system that don't have SIP? Uh, no, it's strictly... Um, a uh, session uh, initiative uh, protocol. It, no, it, it is SIP. It, it's not going to. It's not going to work uh, as um, uh, a paging module unless it's part of that SIP uh, uh, protocol. Because that that is a layer of communication protocol. It sits on top of the layered hardware network and the uh, software layers that are built into uh, TCP IP. It isn't a TCP IP device, however, it's using that particular SIP protocol on a particular peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, communication layer that um, um, needs, needs that whole protocol. So, um, no, you have to have SIP, I'm sorry. I mean, if, if you have a, your typical PBX trunk line, yes, we have a you know, a, a ZP001T module that is your typical ear and mouth type of uh, module that's also a uh, 900 series module um, that, will, that will do the job for you on a standard old school PBX. So uh, if that's it for the questions, uh, thanks so much for attending.